down to the felt we go. The grinder with a little five deuce of hearts. He will call on the button. Wyman with a nine eight says, let's see those first three. And the flop is a 10 six three. Well, two hearts for the grinders. Get the flush draw. Wyman with the gut shot, straight draw himself. He checks. 35,000 bet by the grinder here, and it's going to be called by Weinman. So we're going off to the turn. Grinder looking for a heart, and he's going to get it. Six of hearts. So the flush for the grinder. He's got to be loving it. Well, here comes Weinman betting. 60,000. Well, the grinder just calls. Doesn't raise here with the flush. This feels like quite an odd bet from Daniel Weinman on the turn. Of course, Mizraki has made a flush that makes it feel like a bad bet. That's not the only reason that it feels strange, Jonathan. This feels like Weinman is acting as if he has a range advantage here when the six of hearts comes, which may be true in some cases out of the big blind, but this doesn't feel like one of them, does it, Jonathan? It really doesn't. I mean, traditionally, when someone leads in this spot, when the middle card pairs, they've check called, usually from the big blind, uh, so that means their range is really wide. They're up against a much more defined range, unlike Mizraki's limp from the button range, which could be anything. Usually have a lot more second pair type hands anyway. So leading when you turn trips, which is often going to be a check back from your opponent, makes a lot of sense. And you can do it whether you have it or not. And it's, it's really great. As you're saying, that's not necessarily the case here. I think Mizraki probably... Originally, I said in our podcast, Mizraki has the same amount of sixes. You made a really good case. Mizraki has more sixes than Weinman because Mizraki's the one who bet, and Weinman could have absolutely bet the flop because there was no raise preflop. Right, and Mizraki also has more flushes than Weinman for the same reason. Yeah. So the traditional reason that as the check caller out of the big blind on the flop, you would lead the turn when the middle card pairs and the flush card comes is because you have a range advantage which may be what Wyman is infested with in his mind, but that's not really what's happening. It's not like Mizraki opened from the hijack and Wyman called out of the big blind. It's a very different scenario, but it feels as if Wyman is playing it as if it were that scenario. Yet, it is not that scenario, and Mizraki has a flush. Do you think Mizraki should be raising? It's really close um, in that, like, against a normal... Sp in this, if this was a normal spot, it would be close anyway, because Wyman mostly has trip sixes or nothing if he leads, mostly, right? This is a case... Or a flush. A little oh, bit you're right. He could, he could have a flush, too. That's true. Um, well, I would say mostly this is a call, not a raise, even though I said it was really close, because we have the worst of the flushes, so that's not great. We can only really... We're, we have get called by trip sixes or we fold out... Wyman. One of the things we do by raising it, though, is we deny equity to big hearts, which has some value, but not huge value here on the turn. They only get there like less than 20% of the time. If you want to lead the turn at inopportune times, Nitrogen Sports <laughs> is the place to do it. If you use the link that we tweet out when we tweet about these hands, you get access to our Poker Guys monthly tournament. It's the last Sunday of every month. There are 1,000 buy-ins guaranteed, but we never get more than 180 players. That means there's a huge overlay. Also, Jonathan, fast withdrawals, right? There are not just fast, Grant. They're lightning fast because lightning takes about 90 minutes to, uh, to get from one place to the other if you actually time it. And that's how long the withdrawals take on Nitrogen Sports because it's Bitcoin only. That's industry leading. It's faster than everyone else. So you just got to get in there and get you some poker. Of course, they have casino games. Of course, they have sports betting. It's the best of all. River card is an eight. Well, this gives Wyman two eights. Now he's got check down value, and he does check. How much are you playing? About a million. When you're playing heads up for the title, you know your number of chips, and therefore you should know his number of chips. He's the grinder. He just likes to talk a little bit. 400. But in the meantime, 400,000 is the bet into a pot that's got 260,000 in it. So an overbet by the grinder to make it look like he's bluffing. Oh. But look at this. Weinman's going all in over the top. Fence, if the grinder makes this call, he'll have 3.3 million in chips. Daniel Weinman will be down to 140,000. Well, the grinder is out of time buttons. So he's going to have to make a decision. Within 10 seconds, or his hand's gonna be folded. Wow, Vince, if he loses this tournament, he's gonna look back at this hand 
and say, how did I fold that flush? Daniel shows him the bluff. Nice. Ouch. Weinman shows him the 8-9. That has got to be painful for the grinder. It's got to grind his gears a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But how did we get here? All right, so Weinman checks the river. That makes sense. He's probably planning on against this player, especially, check calling a normal size bet. But that leads us to odd decision number one, which is Mizraki betting 400k into 260. I guess he's going for max value. Is it advisable, Jonathan? I mean, is it fair to say that I kind of hate this bet? Is that okay? I mean, he's the grinder. You can say whatever you want. He's had so much success playing against good players. He's probably trying to balance some of his other overbet bluffs by doing this. But Wyman, with the line that Wyman's taken here, where he goes check call, lead, check. Wyman just rarely has a big hand. He'd be so concerned about Mizraki checking back a pretty good hand here, like an 8 or a 10, because Mizraki could have easily made an 8 on the river. Um, that, like, I just feel like Wyman's almost always betting his good hands here. So if Wyman doesn't have a strong range, which I don't think he has, betting 400K just feels like you're just going to get folds all the time. And I'd, I'd be more, I'd be trying to get value here rather than betting 400k where I just don't think there's very many heroes in Wyman really we're trying to get hero by an eight an eight is the hand that makes the most sense which is basically Wyman leading the gutter on the turn and then picking up a pair or maybe a big heart with right the eight. which is which is ambitious right and it, it just so happens that Mizraki is right and Wyman has an eight yeah but you would feel like the hand that Mizraki is truly targeting the most is trip sixes and it really feels like if Wyman leads the turn with that hand he's probably leading the river with that hand as well yeah so that removes a lot of those combos nonetheless Mizraki does it. He goes for the 400K, and it backfires spectacularly because <laughs> of strange decision number two, which is Weinman moving in. Yeah. 1.4 million effective. This is a huge move in, obviously, made huge because of Mizraki's huge bet. Is this advisable? I mean, it doesn't seem to be. <laughs> I mean, okay. Weinman has a hand that is only a bluff catcher now. Right, and it has all the blockers. So if we're going to move in, this is a good hand to move in with just from a blocker point of view. Right? We block straights, we block flushes, we block full houses. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So that's one That's one reason to actually make this play. That's the only really good reason I can think to make this play, though. Mizraki bets 400K into 260. Mizraki is polarized. He's got a very strong hand or nothing, almost always. I don't think he's turning a 10 into a bluff here on the river. I don't think he's turning an 8 into a bluff here on the river. He doesn't need to. Right, so he'd bet either normal with those hands or check them back. He might check back an eight. He might bet a ten. It's a little unclear, but some, something along those lines. So Wyman is basically raising a bluff catching, pretty good hand into a polarized range when he just doesn't have to. I think this should be a call or a fold. We have hands that are worse than this that maybe we could decide to do this with that also have really good blockers. This just because we hit the eight, I just don't want to do it with this hand when Mizraki's clearly binary here well i think what happened is that wyman saw the sizing and decided nate was never good enough yeah and you know what it's possible that he's right we know that in this one instance he is right that an eight is never good enough and i do think the story is suspect from wyman that if he somehow rivered a full house which is mostly what he's repping here yeah he rivered a full house maybe the nut flush but he would check raise rather than than leading himself after he decided to lead the turn so it's it's a suspect story overall but maybe practically it's okay if in Weinman's mind, Mizraki mostly has either a small flush or a six or a hand that's much worse than that, that I guess are, ju are just in case hands that he's going to fold anyway. Now, I don't know why you would come to that conclusion, but if you came to that conclusion, it would make sense because it's very hard to call with a small flush or a six here. And of course, we see Mizraki folds a flush. So I think Weinman's thinking is still in line with what we were talking about in the last analysis piece, which is where he's imagining a scenario where Mizraki like raised from middle position and Weinman called out of the big blind and that the ranges are based on that. But that's not what's happening. But it really feels like Wyman's playing the whole hand as if that's what's happening, doesn't it? It really does. It's possible there's a whole other component going on here that we're missing. The grinder's, you know, got a whole lot. Of, he's playing potentially exploitatively against the grinder and he's really got a plan and he's just following through with it. But... We can't know that. We're not inside his head. So all we can do is analyze from the outside. That's what we're doing here. And it feels like, or that feels is the wrong word. It looks like, though, that he's making, I would argue, a bunch of like small missteps that should usually cost him tremendously. He does get the fold here. It looks amazing. He's, he's going to end up winning this tournament because he gets the fold, you know? 
But still, it feels like this is the wrong hand to do this with. Uh, if Mizraki is never bluffing when he bets 400K, we can just fold. If Mizraki yeah. is is bluffing a fair amount when he overbets, we can call, right? We don't have to turn a an eight into a bluff here. And I know we've got good blockers, but when Mizraki bets 400K, he's going to have a lot of calls. There's a lot of his value is strong value, and he's going to call. He does have strong value. He's got a flush. This is just right. part, this is just the worst hand he can call with, probably, because even a six blocks full houses, which means he's going to call. I think with King Six ahead of calling with a hand like Five Deuce of Hearts, which does make sense. And also, it's kind of like we're making another assumption as Wyman. Not not only the assumption like we're playing it as if we called out of the big bun when Mizraki open in middle position, but also that Mizraki doesn't have full houses because Mizraki just called the turn. Yeah, I don't think that's true at all. I think Mizraki is a very deceptive player and certainly capable of having full houses. I think Wyman got a little lucky here, and. So be it. It worked out. I understand Mizraki's fold. I agree with you. I think a six would actually be a better call despite being a worse hand because it blocks full houses. But, you know, it feels like kind of a broken clock is right twice a day thing, and it was right this time, and Wyman ends up winning the tournament. So we thought some of these plays were questionable. We acknowledge we're not, like Wyman's had a lot of success, and he's playing against a very particular opponent, so maybe it's not entirely fair to analyze his play as if he was playing against a more normal, regular player, right? Mizraki is going to be a little more wild, a little more, a little more surprising, a little more high variance. But we see some high variance plays for sure by Weinman here. Do you like this river decision by both players? Do you like Mizraki overbetting the pot with the five deuce of hearts? If you do, what is he looking to get called by? And do you think it's reasonable? If you don't, let us know why. Do you like Weinman's decision to go for it big time? Even though it works, do you think it's the right play? We question it pretty strongly. But let us know what you think. And don't just tell what you think. Tell us why you think it. We always like to know that. And if you want to know why we think what we think beyond what we already said here, our podcast is a great place to figure that out because that is where we go into extreme depth. That's where we come up with all of our concepts for these hands. It's called the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the poker guys. You can get it basically anywhere you get your podcasts. You should do it. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more of them, subscribing is a great way to get notifications that we make videos and such. That's what you should do. You should subscribe. Yeah, also, give us a like. Do, do that. that. Do those things. <laughs> do all the things. <laughs> <laughs>